1 over x plus 3. So we have number 1 on page 225. And uh, these are the exercise, not the quick review. So make sure that these are not the quick review ones. The exercise. Okay. So we have... So it's asking you to find a few things. It's asking you to find the limits. It's asking you to find the domain. Go, go. And it's also asking you to find the um, vertical asymptotes. Okay. So we're supposed to find the vertical as only. All right. So it's asking you for the limit, the domain, and the vertical asymptotes. I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and find the horizontal asymptotes and the range as well. Just for good practice. You don't have to do this for every single one of them, but at least for this first one, we're going to look for all of this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look for my horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be at y is equal to something, right? Now, let me ask you. Which one of the three rules will this follow? Is my numerator and my denominator, do they have the same degree? Does my numerator have a greater degree or does my denominator have a greater degree? They have degree? the same degree. Well, look, look, the, the leading coefficients are the same. Well, yeah, the leading coefficients are the same. But when we're talking about the degrees, this is x to the 0 and this is x to the first power. So which one has the greater degree? One denominator. So the denominator has the greater degree. And we know that whenever the denominator has the greatest degree, because it's our first rule when, it, when it, we're talking about horizontal asymptotes, my y is going to be equal to? Equal to zero. zero. Equal to zero. So awesome. We already found that out. Now let's look at our vertical asymptote. How do we find our vertical asymptote? We make the denominator equal to zero. So x plus 3 is going to be equal to zero. And then all we do is we solve for x by subtracting on both sides. So x is equal to negative 3. So my vertical asymptote is going to be what? x is equal to negative 3. Awesome. We already found it. All right. Let's talk about our domain and our range. So if this is our domain, let's, let's, talk, let's think a little bit about what our graph looks like, right? It's going to look a little bit like... We have a vertical asymptote at negative 3, so it looks like this, right? And a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0, so we have a horizontal asymptote there. And it's just going to look a little bit like this and like this. Does everybody agree? Now, if we're talking about domain, which is a set of all x's, does it go on forever to the left? Yeah. Does it go on forever to the right? Which is the only number that it will never, never touch? Negative 3. So we can write our domain a couple of different ways. We can say that the domain is going to be, in set notation, it would be something like the set of all x's, such that x is a real number. Except for, or not equal to, negative 3. And if y'all don't like the way that looks, you can write it in set notation, which is just basically saying x, uh, the domain of x is from negative infinity, comma, to negative 3. And since we are talking about one function together, but there is like sort of like a gap between it, we're going to use union, negative 3 to positive infinity. And so for our range, we can do the same thing. We can say that our range is going to be the set of all y's. But instead of using negative 3, what are we going to use? 0. So y such that y is all real numbers except for 0. Or we can say that it's going to be from negative infinity to 0 union 0 to positive infinity. Now, what would you guys do if we had like more than one vertical asymptote? For example, let's just 
uh, do like a little side note right here. If my vertical asymptote was, let's say, VA at X is equal to negative 2 and 2, what would you guys do? Yeah, we could write it as X such that X is a real number except negative 2 comma 2. Or if we wanted to write it in set notation, we would say from negative infinity to negative 2 union from 2 from negative 2 to positive 2 union from 2 to positive infinity. You see, nothing really changes. It just gets longer. Does that make sense? All right, good. Now that we have our side note, let's talk about our limits. So they're asking for the limits as of your f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left side. And it's talking about the limit of your function of x as x approaches negative 3 from your right side. So let's think about it. From my left side, as I get closer and closer to negative 3, what happens? Ladies and gents, if I follow this purple line right here, what happens? It's going to go negative. It's going to go towards what? Negative infinity. And if I'm approaching from the right side, I'm writing this little purple line again. Where am I going towards? Positive infinity. Yes, we get that. How do you know like, which way the um, Like whether they're going to be like this or whether they're going to be like that? Well, one's a positive function and one's a negative one. So the positive one will always look like this. But like, for example, if you had like a negative up here and that function was negative, then it would look like that. It would just flip. Um, if you're not sure, at least for right now, I don't mind you guys graphing them to see them. Um, so you can definitely do that for right now. But I think when you get to calculus, they're going to want you to be able to tell without uh, having to graph them. And then you would just plug in numbers. Um, to test them out. Are there any other questions? Guys, I really think that you guys can finish at least up to 22. Um, so go ahead and try that out. Um, and let me know if you have questions. We have to find